Hey everyone, thanks for coming. My name's Pete. I run a website here out of London called Electrified Porcupine. And I got into action figures as a youngster, of course. And then as they grew and grew in nostalgia, I got back into it in high school. And my love of toys brought me to creating a website where I love to showcase different things that I buy, review them. So if you've never checked that out, check out electrifiedporcupine.com. And thanks to the wonders of social media, I ended up befriending these two wonderful people. I've got Jay Bartlett right beside me. Hi guys, thanks for coming. And I've got Rob McCallum. Hello. And they're best known for their Nintendo Quest documentary, so make sure you see that if you haven't yet. And they're currently working on a new documentary, a new adventure focusing on action figures, action figure documentary. And it will be coming out sooner than later. And so anyways, this panel is just going to be giving a kind of behind the scenes kind of look of what it takes to make something like Nintendo Quest or the action figure documentary. And if you have any questions as we go along, please raise your hand and yell out a question or two and we'd love to hear from you. So I'm just gonna get things started here, guys. And uh, you know, we're gonna start at the beginning. With you guys working on the Nintendo Quest documentary, how did your friendship and partnership even come about? You know, and, and deciding together how to bring something as ambitious as the action figure documentary and Nintendo Quest to life. Well, we grew up together on the same street, so that helped. Uh, Rob and I have been best friends since I can remember. Um, and he went through film school and started doing some really great independent films. And I remember the call the one day, he called me at my place and just said, hey, I'm looking to do a documentary on collecting. And that's kind of where she started, yeah? Yeah, I knew I wanted to do it on collecting, and this is back in 2013. And it wasn't even decided that it was gonna be video games, and Nintendo Quest was the first film, and then Action Figure Adventure is what we're working on now. And then it just happened that we were both kind of really heating up into the, the game collecting scene, and there was a lot going on with retro gaming. So we, we kind of just steer towards that as, as a whole. All right, so you think that before the, the boom of action figure collecting, you think maybe that the video game collecting nostalgia kind of wave was maybe a catalyst for where things were springing off, bringing kind of like the, the properties and the things from the 80s back that we know and love? I think it's maybe even just more simpler and more primal than that. We just wanted to make a movie about what we loved regardless of trends or fads that were going on. Like I said, we were into gaming, we wanted to do a bunch of gaming stuff, it made sense to do some game collecting stuff. Jay would be the guy that's going to be on camera, I'm going to be the guy wrangling the circus behind the scenes. And when we set out to make Nintendo Quest, it wasn't like we knew exactly what we were doing. It was far from it, it was very much trial by fire. Uh, every day of the shoot, uh, and for those unfamiliar with Nintendo Quest, I essentially dared Jay to collect every single original Nintendo game in 30 days without using the internet in any way. So Jay's portion of, of the film would be me following his journey for one month because it was his dream to always own a complete set. I said, I'm sick of hearing about this for all the years, I dare you to do it, take one month of your life and see what's capable. So that launched essentially the, the giant adventure and for the other adventure, action figure adventure, uh, Jay used his collecting skills and prowess to go down and hunt down action figures, which will be put into an auction with all proceeds going to children's health. So going you know, across North America to find some of the cool pieces and then they're going to be put up in auction. We're targeting next spring, if you're interested in some really cool pieces, uh, with all the proceeds going to help those that really could use the power in the palm of their hand to feel better. I love it, you're taking passion and then also turning it into something where you can help people. Yeah, I've been working with uh, the Children's Health Foundation for quite a few years now in many different iterations. Yes. Whoa, what was that? Sure. Many different iterations and uh, instead of me going out and collecting Nintendo games for myself, which I did the first time around, um, we get to live through the different eras of action figures instead of collecting for myself, 
I decided that uh, putting it up for auction and putting it towards the children's health would be really cool because we still get to experience all the nostalgia. We still get to touch the figures and build the play sets and stuff, but it's going to a much greater cause than my own collection. I love it. That's a fantastic idea. Um, through, uh, through the filming of Nintendo Quest, you know, people love behind the scenes stuff. So there's always the good and the bad, and people like always hearing, you know, some of the juicy stuff. But let's you want focus. the dirt? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, a lot of the dirt, dirt but not yeah. Motley Crue's dirt, because this is a, a oh, clean, a clean panel. Version. Yeah, exactly. So, um, what is something positive that both of you came away with that was maybe unexpected? Like your biggest reward or positive moment coming out of filming Nintendo Quest? I would say getting a, a broader sense of what the world has to offer, interacting with different people in the collecting world, seeing different collectors, meeting different collectors, how they display their collections, um, opening up that community to both of us, having that camaraderie. It's 99.9 .9 positive. Honestly, I have very minimal to complain about. It was just an awesome experience. And with action figures so far, we're still shooting, but e even more so with that. It's just, yeah, when you agree, yeah? Yeah, it's a pretty positive space. The internet isn't always peachy, as most of us know. It's not the most safe free zone at times. It's pockets of really poisonous fandom. No. Yes, it's a true is. story, yes. Oh, but in person, most of these people are quite different, whether they're putting on an act or not, I don't know, but our experience with people is good. I think the biggest positive takeaway from Nintendo Quest so far, uh, Pete, is to see how one month can change a person's life when they put everything else on hold, all the excuses, all the obstacles, all, all the day-to-day -day stuff that, that bog us down. When you, when you free yourself from that and you decide to go after your dream, which is a very, very powerful word and something that is so personal, and you decide to go after that, your life can't help but change and you can't help but evolve as a result. So Nintendo Quest is very much a, a, you know, a collecting and a love letter to Nintendo kind of film, but it's also very much a human story, uh, a bit of a social experiment to what can happen to you when you go through the process of that. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll springboard off of that. When you're talking about change, what change occurred in either of you? I had a lot more air miles after Nintendo Quest. I have a lot less money after Nintendo Quest. Um, no, just, I mean, if you want to go back, um, I'm not, at that time, I wasn't someone who traveled great distances, and now I consider myself a traveler. I love, it's hard for me to stay at home now. I love when we go out and do our shoots. Whatever city we're going to, okay, let's go. I don't care. Let's hit the road and go. Um, so it's expanded my horizons in many ways that way. Sounds good, yeah. I mean, Nintendo Quest was my first feature-length documentary, and so you learn a lot, and you change as a filmmaker, and you start to develop that voice and that vision for what you're trying to do. So that was evolving a little bit as we shot. I learned really not to have too many expectations as a documentary filmmaker one that likes to have things unfold on the camera and not know the end result. So I, I'm the kind of guy that likes to capture very story-driven content where I only think I know about 50% of what's gonna happen and I let everything else just naturally unfold. And I take the good with the bad. It's, it's the truth, right? And the truth can never be wrong. And I think that, that's where the real beauty is. And if you guys watch Nintendo Quest, um, all the stuff that I go through, a lot of the stuff when Rob's on camera is to help me because it's, as funny as this sounds, it's incredibly stressful and incredibly difficult to make some of these decisions and to go into these places. And uh, Rob was there to, to help me out because yeah, it's, it's pretty lonely in front of that camera when everything around you is real, you got one take, you go into a store and you don't know what you're gonna find and all eyes on you, it's incredible pressure.